still don't know how to take that final corner. It remains a mystery to me, if I'm honest. Oh, I'm gonna go to last here, Jesus Christ. No! <laughs> what a disaster, Jesus, man. Nice and gentle now. Treat the car with respect and it should give you rewards. drive this car again just lambo things anyone can drive this hunk of shit is actually has has my full respect hello viewers super gt here so you could see in a recent live stream i was having an absolute ton of trouble with this lamborghini huracan i said i wouldn't drive it again but here i am putting myself through torture to drive it again and just before we get going on this video, I just want to let you know about this tournament that I'm going to be taking part in over the coming weeks on Race Room Experience on the PC. Uh, Porsche have actually invited me to take part in it. Porsche Community Legends it's called. I'm going to post all the information in a pinned comment down below if you want to take part. But you could uh, win some Fanatec equipment, in-game prizes, racing against some factory drivers from Porsche. So good stuff. If you want to have a look at that, definitely um, have a look at the pinned comment down below. Should be good fun actually. I've actually not played too much race room, but it'll be good to get into a different sim and see see what it's all about. But we return to Fuji for a twisted adventure of death and near death well death and near death experiences, but hopefully eventually some success in this car. I kind of declared on my live stream that I would no longer ever drive this car again because it's just so horrible to drive. It really just wants to spin out on any given corner. And I find myself here a few days later going through the motions of trying to get good. Now, I thought I'd do a first race here. Started 10th, already up to 9th. And just try to get good, basically. I, just, I didn't want to back down and let the car defeat me. I wanted to get good learn how to actually drive it, get some decent lap times, and get some decent results. You can see here, starting 10th, up to 9th now, but starting this far back in the pack is just going to be so difficult to get a decent result from here, especially in four laps. It's very, very difficult. You're relying on luck and everyone else in front of you getting set to the realm, and that's not always going to happen. It does happen most of the time, to be fair, but you can't always rely on it. It's not the most trustworthy of things to rely on for success in a race um, so I thought I'd do this race first just to really warm myself up once again after my previous endeavours on the live stream this was a couple of days later uh, as we wind down towards turn one big braking zone this one you really do have to nail your braking point especially from the slipstream as, as it does change and I, I normally forget that it changes and I make a massive hash of it uh, so lap two, you see there's a very big group, a group of four up in front, and myself and the McLaren here are going to make it a group of six at this rate, because they are fighting very, very hard up there as we wind round into the hairpin. And uh, the reason why this car is so difficult is because, well, the cars with rear engines or mid engines, they just tend to want to oversteer a lot, and this car is just probably the worst for that. The Audi R8 is a bit similar, but I'll say this car is probably the worst. Around the outside of that VW, the McLaren went up the other, the other side, it was almost like Hacken and Schumacher, kind of esque. And uh, we still have the VW on our right hand side here. I'm going to try and give him space on the right hand side. And then we'll have the inside for this left of turn number 14, and we've got the job done the inside we go. It's, the, it's these last two corners here which are just an absolute nightmare. The car just it doesn't particularly want to face forwards, it just wants to be in reverse gear going backwards for the most part. That's why it constantly wants to spin. But we find ourselves here in 8th, now into 7th and a legit shot at 6th place. 
But look how quick that McLaren is in a straight line. It is a McLaren F1. I suppose it should be quick in a straight line. But even with the slipstream, we are only just keeping up with it. Uh, the Huracan itself is actually a really quick car in a straight line, but just shows you how quick the McLaren is, as we couldn't quite get past in the tow. So to stay behind for now in seventh. A little bit of a margin there to the guy behind us in eighth. Clipping the apex nicely there for turn number three. And you've got this really long double apex right handle right up to the back of the McLaren. As the McLaren doesn't have the best handling, especially for these longer sweeping turns. And then actually my turn to get a long, long way from the apex. As we then wind down towards Dunlop Corner, turn number 10. Very easy to get this one wrong. Look for the gantry on the right hand side, there it is. In the slipstream, you're breaking definitely before, maybe a car length or two before. And uh, we managed to get in there okay. It looked like there was a bit of a dive bomb from behind from the German, but thankfully it didn't result in anything. Looking at third, fourth, and fifth up here, look at this. They are fighting very, very hard. That's always going to give us half a chance, as I can't quite get past the McLaren at this point. But it is worth maybe just waiting. You could always send up the inside. This final corner, really good for overtaking. If the other guy defends it, you can always try to get a run on the exit, which I'm going to try and do here. As we go onto the main straight for the final time, or at least the full length of the straight for the final time, McLaren just pulling away. And there's, is, there's a group of four now, and therefore it's going to get rather tasty. Group of six fighting here for second place on the final lap. And it could be interesting to see how exactly this goes. The leader has just disappeared off into the distance and is in pretty much a different category to everyone else. As we've got the Russian here getting barged wide and he moves down to fifth. Looking for the inside here, not quite going to happen. So have to just kind of wait. And then uh, Russian gets kind of barged wide, gets a one second penalty for getting barged wide. And um, he's going to be absolutely kicking himself right now or kicking his console or taking the Gran Turismo disc out and kicking the disc. As we come in I'm gonna, we're going to get pincer attacked here from the German and the Russian and I feel like I'm in Poland in 1942 but uh, we continue in 6th place it was meant to be, it really was just meant to be although you still see a group of 4 up ahead what kind of shenanigans are going to continue into this final corner? Well, the shenanigans are going to be here. I'm going to really defend it, but this German is not having any of it. Up the inside he goes. And you might be able to hear me swear there, as um, my, my mic was picking up my live commentary at the time. As we got the inside, he, I, he, he backed off. I think he knew that that was a bit of a strong one. And um, we finish in sixth. So there, therefore, of course, a Super GT video. Confirmed. First race back, sixth place. It just had to be. It was always going to be that. But it was too far back. You know, starting 10th is too far back. And I uh, wanted to study here. I was going to become a student of the Huracan. The beastly Italian motor, which is very difficult to tame. And we're going to study this Spaniard who was set the number one time in the MEA. And just look how graceful this guy can control this car. It just is another level of control. There's just no drama with this guy. He's making it look easy. Just let me tell you, this car is just not easy to drive. It just constantly wants to spin. I've said it so many times. And uh, this guy just making it work like a dream. Absolutely beautiful handling. He just really has complete control over this car. And the key, really, is to get the car rotated in the corner and then get on the power as early as possible. It sounds easy, but you try to rotate the car and it's very easy for the car just to oversteer completely and it's just getting that fine delicate balance correct and this guy has obviously got that down to its T, absolutely nailing it right now do the final sector third gear for that corner that's probably something i could do i was going down to second i think and through turn number 15 fairly narrow look at this line though through the final corner really really narrow just keeps it really pinned on the apex so no need to go out wide to get a good exit because it just gets the rotation and minimizes the distance to travel so he gets a really good line and uh, that lap there is going to be as we come onto the line it's going to be a 37.4 there it is 
and that's a second quicker than what I managed on my previous qualifying lap. Um, and normally I'm pleased to be one second away from the number one time. You can see it there, 38.4, my time. Um, but I want to go in, I want to improve, and I want to try to eat away into that one second. Uh, so normally, yeah, I get to one second away, and I, I'm kind of happy with it, and then I kind of leave it there. But you can see there, I'm qualifying 10th in the race, so obviously it's not good enough. I need to be qualifying higher up on the grid than that. Therefore, we do need to get that point four down ideally to so maybe a point two or a point one even a 37 if possible i think i could get a 37 if i absolutely nailed a lap but time trialing is not my strength i would say that i, I perform a lot better in the race normally moving forward uh, when i'm not bottling it but uh, the time trialing is just something i'm going to have to get better at it's just the patience i don't really have the patience i i can do two three laps quite comfortably and then when, when I'm having a long session of anything more than 10 minutes, I just get bored and I can't be bothered to do it anymore. And then I make a mistake and I'm like, screw this lap, I'm quitting. Uh, so that, that approach certainly has to, has to change if I want to get good at time trialing. Um, but on this occasion, specifically getting good at time trialing in this very car around this very track, which is a difficult combination, it must be said, especially this final sector. I'm sure many of you would agree. You get into these kind of corners here, and you're on a good lap, but then you completely make a hash of it uh, by this point. So we're going to try to utilise this narrower line, which you can see here, maybe a little bit too narrow, but still actually quite hooked up quite nicely. And we don't have any reference here, so I don't know how quick this lap is going to be. But we cross the line, so our quickest is 38.4, this is a 38.6. Not too bad, given that was just our first lap on this new session uh, so we have a good reference there to try and beat we need to go quarter of a second faster than the 38.69 there and we should beat our previous record and um, something else that I kind of noted that uh, really does hinder me personally and it may well hinder you too is just constant, constantly looking at the, the delta so it's that little number just above the rev gauge it's got the little blue triangle and the red triangle if you're going up or you're going down. So it just tells you how quick you are compared to your fastest lap. And it's just constantly looking at that and thinking about it, which is a distraction. I suppose ideally you just want to be focusing exactly where you're braking, accelerating and turning. You don't want to really need to know much else on the time trial, except for when you cross the line and see what your lap time is. Um, but I think it does put some undue pressure on when, when you're two tenths up and you know that you can improve your lap and then you get into the final corners and then you completely blow it because you know that there's some pressure on completing that lap but there you go I'm sure there are strategies to work around it maybe just putting a piece of tape over it so I can't actually see the delta that could possibly help but we'll see how this lap is because it is going to be slightly quicker uh, judging by the delta in fact yes we are going to go a quarter of a second or more quicker so as we cross the line then Second lap, 38.393, so just shy of a four, a couple of hundredths quicker than our previous records, that's good. Now you can see here, 21 and a half minutes later, I couldn't, I still couldn't beat my, my time. Uh, so we got down to a very good time quickly, but you see just how close it was, I was getting consistent. So even though I wasn't getting the pace, the absolute speed, I was getting the consistency. And uh, that's also a very useful thing to learn in time trialing. You see the laps there, a lot of uh, 38s, low 38s, mid 38s, a couple of 39s when I got one corner or two wrong. But the consistency was, was improving and that is always a good thing because in this car it's so easy just to make that one mistake and it can ruin your race completely. And therefore you want to minimise those as well as getting faster. And um, a couple of laps later, on that 14 going a little bit quicker then 326 uh, so just chipping away half a temp here and there so at this point it's taken 29 minutes to go one tenth quicker and at this point you can see it here I'm nearly a quarter of a second up so I could do a 38 1 here if I just uh, do the final sector as I've been doing it before but unfortunately I break just a tiny bit too early just really of a fraction of a second too soon and we get ourselves a penalty for cutting that chicane. And boom, we end that session there. Half an hour was pretty long for me. 
I rarely ever do that long in a time trial. But that is what it takes to just chip away those tents. And we are there, therefore 0.9 away from the top in the region, top time in the region. So that's not too bad. But then, this is the way it seems to always go, isn't it? You just you, know, you jump into another session. So I, I backed out of that qualifying there and jumped into the race entry so that I didn't miss the race. And this lap here is going to be even quicker. Uh, so this is going to be my quickest lap around this race. Looking for that 100 ball, breaking pretty much halfway between that and, and the 50, so about 75 in. Before that corner. Hooking up really nicely here. So you're lifting off, digging the car in, waiting, waiting, and coming back to that second apex. Look at that shed on the right hand side, that last one. You're breaking just after it. And then really hooking up, getting the car to rotate, and then powering out to the outside. And the good thing here is that I don't have the delta because this is the first lap on a new session, so I don't know how quick I am. And it's probably a good thing. It's not something I can be distracted by on this lap. Look for the gantry breaking just before it, I'd say. And then hooking up in first gear, really making the most, uh, the most of that curve. I was going to make up another word then. The most of that curve. And uh, third gear here. I was going down to second previously, but third gear seems to really stabilise the car very nicely. And uh, down to second here. The leader was, uh, also the number one time, was uh, flicking down to the first gear to help rotate the car, but I felt more comfortable just keeping second, although do go out to first for the final corner to get slightly better traction and speed on the way out. So let's see what this lap time is going to be. The good thing is I didn't have a distraction. Coming up to the line, the seconds are counting up and you're just hoping the line comes up soon. And there it is, 38.2. So I spent half an hour trying to beat the time. I quit, I joined a new session and then boom, first time get the new lap times and uh, sixth place on my friends list of all places to be. It just had to happen. So now we rejoin and you can see here starting a lot further up in the grid. Third place this time and we've got the German Civil War here up turn one. Flo Chris going for the big lunge on the leader and I'm going to take full advantage of that and move up into second. So we continue. Just try to get some good results here. A little bit wide here, as I wasn't quite sure where that German was. He was slightly on my inside, but I am just going to keep the inside here as we get swarmed by the Germans and try to hold our own as the low Brit coming into the hairpin of turn six. And this guy just visiting in the screen and saying goodbye as he spins out. Very easy to do. That would have been me about an hour ago. As um, he just says says hello but then also says goodbye and pays a visit to the barrier and down into the hairpin then just gonna lose control just a tiny mistake and this is the difference right because in practice it's so easy well, actually no it's not easy it's easier because you don't have slipstream in in the race there's obviously pressure of other drivers to worry about you have to worry about other drivers they're a distraction in some way and you also have slipstream to worry about. So there are more factors to think about in the race compared to the time trial. And therefore it is easier, I think, to make a mistake in the race as you have a lot more to worry about. Uh, this guy then uh, serving a one second penalty. Uh, we're gonna jump back past him into second uh, as the leader just begins to pull away. He is swerving here to try to break the toe, but I am just about still in it uh, with 1.5 seconds being the toe limit, I'd say we are within that. I'm into turn one then, lap number two, and we're going to try to take advantage of the toe plus our practice to try to reel this guy in and see if we can. So end of lap three then, uh, or final sector at least, you see the gap here below a second, so we did actually manage to put in some decent times here. Uh, currently with the quickest lap of the race, with a mid-38, but I think we can go slightly quicker here, especially with the slipstream as we come through into the final two corners of the lap. I'm going to keep it quite narrow this time and then keep it in for that late apex. Really difficult. I just really cannot fathom this circuit because most tracks, if I put a fair amount of time into it, I begin to learn them and understand them. But still with these final corners, I, I, I just still cannot get that consistency. It is really difficult to really nail that, that last couple of corners. The first sort of half of the lap is actually quite easy, I'd say. But that last couple of corners so so difficult to nail and uh, we put in a very good lap time there 38.3 in the race yes it is slipstream assisted but still good to be able to do it 
and we're going to run on board for the entirety of this final lap as we begin to put flow press 90 under some pressure he's going to know that if i'm somewhat close coming into that final sector i could always go for a move into the final turn i could always get the slipstream on the straight to the run uh, with the run to the line the run to the line here is quite long actually from the final corner to the finish line and therefore you can get past people with the slipstream and therefore that is going to be something he is thinking about for sure um, although he doesn't want to think about it too much because he just needs to focus on controlling the car as it's hard enough to do that on its own now then coming down towards the final sector for the fourth and final time in this race working just before the gantry in the slipstream therefore you do have to break slightly bit earlier although right onto the back of him i think he might have braked a tiny bit too early there and we definitely have a chance of going for the race victory here so we've gone from fighting from 10th to 6th place to now possibly going for race wins that definitely shows you a nice nice transition to better results courtesy of a good decent practice session and better qualifying result he's going to go very narrow hold the inside i'm looking for the inside it wasn't going to happen tiny tap in the in the rear end it keeps it under control on the exit right behind him here maybe too close of anything as i cannot get the slingshot too much but we're going to put it into the toe pull out to the right hand side it's going to be a drag race to the line can we get this race win? It's going to be so close as we come up to the finish line. And as we cross the line, there we go. It was within, there it is, 0.021. So close on the line. Unfortunately, it couldn't be a race win, but I've got to take a second. You know, we were starting 10th on the previous race. To go from there to now finishing second, almost, race, uh, almost a race win. That's good. And uh, the next race, this began the demise of Super GT. I think I probably should have stopped after that previous race because there is such thing as playing too much and just getting absolutely burnt out and just making so many stupid mistakes. I, was, I went back to the Mark 1 Super GT at the start of the video making all those mistakes. Um, I went down to 10th, managed to recover some positions courtesy of these crashes and penalties and got back up into 7th. Still not good enough though. We want to be finishing a lot higher than that. Uh, we go again. And um, Marky Boy here, making a mistake. Marky Boy, a uh, really fast player back in the day um, from GT Academy in the earlier days. Sort of on the level of Tijani, that's, that's kind of what you're looking at here. And uh, he's come back to GT Sport, he hasn't played it too much, but quite quickly got back onto a very decent pace. And uh, he wants to play ball here, we're going to go and work together. He actually races in Club 100 as well, so I know him in reality too. Although coming into Turn 1, we're going to receive a tap in the rear ends. And then he's going to receive a tap in every end and then to get spun out. And uh, I'm going to hold my own here in second place. Uh, lead it with a penalty. And that may well have distracted me to try and push too hard. And then I make the mistake. Um, so yeah, it's not really going too well at this point. Uh, so down to fifth. I'm going to try to recover some positions. The three cars ahead of us, none of them are Huracans. So they've got slightly easier cars to control. Although maybe that Toyota is not the easiest of cars. I'd say the Porsche is actually a very good shout around this track, just doesn't have the straight line speed. Although if you're in the toe, then it is all right, I suppose. And here is the Porsche on the straight. And you see, um, well, he does have decent speed, but he's in the toe there, just about of the speed up in second place. And there we are, going to go up the inside. I felt confident on the brakes into turn one in this car. Uh, turn one was actually all right. The first half of the track I found fine. It was just the second half, which is a lot more difficult. And uh, crossing the line there. Uh, re uh, recovering to third, salvaging a decent result, I suppose. Hello viewers, Super GT here. Hello viewers, Super GT here. And we continue for another race. So, it was very much the same um, top three of us here. The Spaniard out in the lead. The Spaniards in this race were really quick. They, they really know how to drive this car, this track. But look at this move. This is move of the millennium for sure. And um, up the inside we go beautifully on the brakes. I'm sure that when the year 2999 comes around, they're going to look back at that overtake and go, yeah, yeah, for sure. That was overtake of the millennium. There's going to be no doubt about that. So if you're watching this in the year 2999, thank you for my award for overtaking the millennium. And just want to thank uh, my mum for well, just raising me to be this fantastic overtaker at Turn 1 at Fuji. But enough of that. 
we're actually gaining on the Spaniard now. In the Slipstream, you've you've got every chance. You've got every chance as long as you don't bottle it completely. As we almost do there on the curb. As we come into the final corner. Uh, it's going to be lap four then. It's going to be very close then, coming into the final lap. As we end lap three now. And this guy very much is going to uh, swerve around, but you just got to just follow exactly where he is. It's like a mini game. Follow the guy exactly where he goes. Do not, do not, you know, deviate from the path. But coming in here, we've got a very good chance of uh, winning this race. But um, this is Super GT we're talking about, and I, I break just too late. I, I, I think I just played this game too much by this point, and I, I, I just lost my concentration. I overcooked myself and started doing too many stupid things. Uh, we did, we did recover to second courtesy of this penalty from Marky Boy. Um, but it's very disappointing, but I did realise this, right? Okay, okay, it's very annoying that I could have won that race, but I finished second. But at least I'm fighting for the win, you know? That's a good improvement. Before I was fighting for fifth or, or sixth place at best. Um, but this time, you know, at least, I, at least I'm fighting at the front. That is a good problem to have. Now we've got a Russian thrown into the mixer this time. And I was counting on ghosting happening there, it didn't. And my gamble backfired and I ended up off the circuit on the grass in 11th place. So these races, it's pretty much going back to how it was in the live stream of absolute catastrophic disaster over and over again. And um, this is the last straw, this was the final straw. You can see this guy behind was about half a second behind and uh, therefore I'm minding my own business. He's nowhere near close enough to go for the move, except is he? because he goes for it and I get a three second penalty for getting dive bombed. Okay then, uh, so we accidentally managed to find the main menu and uh, that was the end of that. Although at least I thought it was because I really wanted to just get that race win. And I thought I'd do it here. This is a lower level lobby to be fair. My, my SR went down as you can expect from the rage quit. I thought, you know what? This is a good opportunity just to just to bring home a race victory. At the end of uh, lap number two, we're a good, comfortable three seconds ahead with two laps to go. Should be fairly comfortable. And, um, well, Gran Turismo says otherwise, because I came through this corner and I met my fate on this auto spin curb. And at this point, it was a very, very sad tale of what could have been a good triumph, but it just turned out to be a tragedy as I end up spun into the barrier, reset on the circuit, and I just basically had enough. And the game wanted me to finish sixth. As you can see here, I got demoted to sixth place and there was a massive gap back to seventh. I would have finished that race in sixth place. And it was just, it's absolutely fixed. This game is cursed for me, it really is. But there we go. That was quite a fine adventure, it really was. It was a, a story of trials and tribulations a real roller coaster of emotion and it went every way left right up and down whatever you name it it went there but that is all for me thank you so much for watching thanks for making it this far into the video i hope you enjoyed it as always uh, take care and i'll see you next time goodbye